Cheers, guys. Epix 911, welcome to the Wednesday, October 11th, 2017 edition of VR News. Lots of Oculus Connect 4 stuff going on today. Of course, that event taking place, lots of announcements coming from there. We've got a couple of non-Connect 4 stories as well, but just a quick channel update. Work continues on Virtual Reality A to Z Episode 2, but I've got another topical video that's going to be released tonight. This one not requiring a lot of editing and probably being one of the oldest requests that was sitting, well, not completed in my in-basket, that of a behind-the-scenes look. And what made me decide to finally release it now was a comment from longtime viewer Kim Astor where he said he prefers the news stories where I'm not doing a voiceover. In other words, I'm on camera like right now talking to you guys. And I do try to mix it up, but what I get into with this behind the scenes video is the why for that. The types of videos, how I will determine which one I'm going to do on a given news story. For those who are interested, maybe your content creators, uh, or you're just new to it. If you're more advanced than me, you're going to be sorely disappointed. But if you're interested in what that behind the scenes looks like, expect that video to be up within about an hour of this one. It's pretty long, 25, 26 minutes. But as usual, I will have timestamps in there so you can get to the meaty pieces that you want. With that said, guys, let's dive into tonight's episode. Starting things off with Oculus Connect 4. The biggest announcement probably coming out of day one, the announcement of the Oculus Go standalone virtual reality head mounted display. So this unit pricing wise, $199 US when it releases, and that's gonna be early 2018. They don't have an exact date for it. It's in the feature list that I'm a little disappointed, namely the first spec, and that is three degree of freedom. We're going to talk about why I don't think that's sufficient controller wise and we'll do that in the second story that actually ties in. For now, let's just continue with the specs. What I do like, 110 degree field of view matching the Rift and Vive, a 2560 by 1440 pixel LCD panel and a very Samsung Oculus Gear VR looking controller. Now, speaking of Gear VR, the unit was announced by Hugo Barra as being binary compatible, so software compatible via SDKs moving forward. So many of the existing Gear VR titles aren't just going to work. They are going to select specific titles to be there for launch day, and then moving forward, titles created on either unit are going to work on the other because of the SDK changes. However, not completely backwards compatible. The developer kit for that is going to ship next month, which of course is November. All right, so next up, at the Connect 4 event, a 90 second video showing the Santa Cruz prototype head mounted display with six degree of freedom controllers. Now, I mentioned being disappointed in the first story with the three degree of freedom, and this is why. Uh, Andrew Mellum, he talks about the tracking and the gesture recognition as this is performed in the background. And when you see the controllers in action, that to me sells the biggest aspect of Santa Cruz. And that is the convergence of technology between the standalone VR HMDs and the tethered units like the Rift, the Vive, the PlayStation VR. We need to get closer on our mobile and standalone units. Santa Cruz, a move in that direction. The Oculus Go, I'm afraid, not a move in that direction. It's basically the Gear VR under a different brand name. That's all that is. And it's not really getting me excited in the same way as Santa Cruz with its six degree of freedom controller is. I think that's gonna be the bare minimum as we round the bend into 2018. It just doesn't make sense to go with anything less or you know, take that step back and essentially plateau with the status quo of three degree of freedom. 
And I think we need to move beyond that. I'm excited to see the Santa Cruz doing that. So let's take a little trip back to 1991. Exidy and I have our Amiga 500 computers. We have shoe boxes, guys, of three and a half inch disc games. Well, Exidy's got a hard drive, a whopping 20 megabyte hard drive on his Amiga 500 that basically blanks the screen when it gets used because, well, older technology. But by 1991, we were looking over our shoulders and we were looking at the PC market and we were drooling, truth be told. The PC had 256 color VGA becoming the standard and damn were those games gorgeous to look at. Now we knew selling our Amigas, which we did at the same time, we even went to buy our PCs, which were 386 DX40s. We bought them at the same time to get the price break, a bit of a discount, so we could purchase games, of course. We knew about the sound. In fact, we started with PC speaker sound, unfortunately. What we weren't prepared for was DOS. And, well, X-Tree Gold. See, when you're coming from the Amiga, you've got a preemptive multitask system, Workbench was the operating system and it was amazing. It was awesome and you could launch games directly from it. Well, yes, PCs had Windows sort of 3, 3.1. At that point, I think it was 3. It was just, it was pitiful, guys. There was no comparison. You basically ran any decent game from DOS and the utility at the time was X tree gold. So user interfaces, well, for us, it was a step back. And it wasn't really until about Windows 95 era that, in my opinion, the PC caught up with where a lot of other machines, the Atari, Apple, already were. And really, it's been pretty status quo since. Sure, resolutions have gotten better. But what about some really cool fundamental changes to desktops and how we navigate with them. Well, that's where this update comes in. Nate Mitchell today announcing a new interface for the Rift and Touch Controller called Oculus Dash, the app advertising multitasking across various desktop applications, your VR library, all using what they state is an intuitive built for the touch interface and I love the scrolling icon bar at the bottom of the video it looks to be an application launch bar and right in that default view it seems to be like a large icon view what would be awesome is if there was a detail or a list view also available I just think virtual reality is going to offer that next level of functionality. Can't wait to find out a little bit more about Dash. When we do, we're gonna talk about it here. One more generation, well, this current generation running through it, 4K is the next stop. And I think 4K is that is that marker where using your desktop, where a lot of the text non-friendly 1080p stuff is going to be addressed. Probably still going to be issues with some people with screen door effect, but text legibility, that should be addressed. And along with that, desktop navigation. I think more and more people, while VR users, are going to be enticed by what they're going to be able to do within VR desktop wise compared to outside of the desktop. That is one of the aspects of VR. Aside from gaming, that personally has me super freaking excited. Can't wait. And the other announcement today. So we have the Summer of Rift and the Summer of Rift knocks the price for the Rift Touch Bundle to $399. At the end of the summer, the price goes back up, not to the high price, to $499, about a hundred bucks more. Well, announced today, effective immediately, the bundled Touch Rift price back to Summer of Rift, $399 US. 
and that is for the foreseeable future. So think of that as a permanent, permanent price drop. I do feel bad if you purchased it within the last few weeks. Hopefully, you can get some kind of credit or price break, but if you've been waiting, well, what can I say? If you wanted an Oculus, now's the time to buy it. You can get it ahead of summer or uh, winter rather, the holiday season, and then buy yourself a few games and applications that you're really looking forward to. Do that immediately, but then wait. Wait for the sales that are inevitable around the holiday season and then pad out that game library. And one of the cooler announcements today, game-related, coming out of Connect 4, is Titanfall developer Respawn Entertainment announcing a virtual reality project for 2019. Unfortunately, there's not many details. You've got CEO Vince Campella and one of the engineers, John Sherling, talking about the type of fast-paced combat that Titanfall is, of course, famous for, which mixed soldier-style first-person combat with mechs, but not your slow, lumbering mech types, fast, generally fast mech types. And I'm okay with that if this future game isn't of the lumbering variety, if it's the faster mech styles. I'm guessing that's where they're going because that's their expertise. And if that is the direction they're going, like I said, fine by me, that would be freaking awesome. They've learned a lot about pacing and multiplayer. Now, mixing that in with some virtual reality, well, we should be in for a treat. It's hard to get really excited about stuff, you know, when it's still a year and a half away, but it's, it's a marker on the calendar to say, look, VR is not going anywhere. These are the projects in the pipeline. This is the technology that's being released now. This is the technology, hardware, software being released next year. Sure, there's going to be companies continuing to fold on the sidelines. We're going to see more Nokia Ozos. That's just, that's, well, that's the reality of a market that is emerging like VR is. But there are also going to be success stories there's going to be traction and more and more better virtual reality games. Guys, I can't wait. So with that, there's not much to worry about, but a lot to get excited about. Personally, myself, I can't wait. And with that said, guys, hump day officially in the books. The weekend nears. Guys, as always, cheers.